and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeen, uzwan and jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah Allah granted us to reach to this day in which to see the holy month of Safar open and the month in which Allah inspires those whom believe that run from shaitan and in our life always running from shaitan and run to the cave of Allah's rahmah and mercy. And that Allah described in Surah Al Kaf that they believed, the youth whom had belief that they entered into the cave so that Allah could grant them guidance. So means that this teaching and this path it builds our faith. And then the month of Safar comes and they remind us that enter into the cave of immense rahmah. And that's when we talked and I asked somebody else what we talked about and was that clear and they said, I don't remember you even said that. So everybody is picking up what they want to pick up on their antenna. The cave it represents the reality of A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. All uloom and knowledges they start from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and everybody's familiar with saying Bismillah for everything. You want to eat you say Bismillah, when you want to do something say Bismillah. Whenever you want something good and want to do something good you should be able to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem on that action. And the cave represents that we're on a journey into Allah's rida and satisfaction. What we call the Muhammadan heart is a manzil Qur'an in which Allah just imagine what's in this heart of light that Allah's Divinely speech, manzil Qur'an is the Qalb al-Muhammadiyya, this beatific location in which Allah's Divinely words that are not created continuously emanating because Qur'an didn't stop. And the words of Allah didn't stop and Allah is in continuous Divine speech into that heart. So imagine the immensity of that heart, the beauty of that heart and entering into that heart our whole life is about understanding A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. That is our protection and the door in which to every reality to open. So again, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. So where is I'm seeking refuge, I'm seeking protection in Allah from the accursed shaitan? Where is that? Where can you seek refuge in Allah that protects you from shaitan when shaitan is everywhere? So that becomes our understanding and the haqqaiqs in which only Allah have taught to us and we convey back is that you have to seek refuge in those whom Allah has already granted a refuge. So if everything on the sky was exploding and everything was about to attack and bomb upon your head and every type of difficulty to befall a person they would run to a cave, they would look for a cave and historically they were very safe in caves. Even when the superpowers of the earth were bombing and everything, people with pajamas and slippers were running into caves and no harm came to them. And this is a physical cave and Allah want for us to understand is run to the cave. In all our life and in every action shaitan is after us. That is the game of this dunya. If we forget the game of dunya then we have become lost to dunya and that's when they describe you became heedless, you, you lost yourself. How you lose your thing you and the shaitan wants to take you, to use you and manipulate you. And that is the only purpose that shaitan wants, doesn't want to help me, 
doesn't want to raise me, just wants me to be punished by Allah So then A'udhu is our whole understanding is that my whole life is to seek refuge in Allah and that Allah gave this refuge already to people on this earth. So then that refuge and the strongest cave in existence is Qalb al-Muhammadiyya and that's why Allah describes that heart, I'm not on earth and I'm not on the heavens but I'm in the heart of my believer. Qalb al-Mu'min baytullah, what mu'min Allah is talking about? Allah's only interest is in Sayyidina Muhammad So means Allah in every direction is guiding to us that the heart and this beloved heart is my house and I'm not on earth, I'm not on heaven, I'm in the heart of that belief. So make your life running into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad So we're clear, da'uzu is that I have to seek refuge in Allah but Allah has granted that refuge, otherwise I'm running where? Then all my life will be I don't know where is protected. No, we know where is protected. The heart of Sayyidina Muhammad is protected by Allah How then I can send my arwah, how can I send my soul into that cave? Because if my soul goes into the cave, my body most definitely will be protected. But if my soul is not in that cave and I don't live a life understanding that cave and that reality, my body is open for every type of attack and difficulty, mushkilat, every type of testing that's going to come upon this earth. So then what Prophet described? You be with whom you love. So our ticket to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is muhabbat, you be with whom you love. Not whom you think about and, and whom you often ponder about or someone whom you every now and then contemplate, oh this was a great messenger and wow look he's in a book of hundred most powerful people. But he said, you be with whom you love. So our life is then to build the muhabbat and ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad By doing that these are step by step, step by step very easy process. So we want to go into a cave of safety, be with Sayyidina Muhammad Hadith comes and tells us, oh you want to be? You'll be with whom you love. Prophet is teaching then indirectly, love me and I'll love you. Love me, you'll be with me and if you're with me, I'm with you. So then everything in our life is to build this love of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result that is entering into the cave. So when I sit at home I do my salawats, I do my zikr, I do all the awrads that were given to me and I make a special emphasis on the salawat. Salawat al-Nabi it builds that ishq, it builds that love that, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem this life has become difficult for me, who you want to talk to? You want to talk uh, only to Allah that's kind of arrogant. You don't know yourself, you're a human being and you're cutting out the most important gift that Allah has given to us is our messenger, our imam. Allah described what? When you're zalim to yourself, jauka. So means that when we're sad and depressed we admitted we are a zalim. And what Allah says then a zalim to do? Jauka is to go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and ask istighfar, ask my forgiveness in his presence. So, so when we sit and we make our tafakkur we start to make salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad Remember me, I remember you. 
as soon as you make one salawat the presence of Prophet soul comes to send ten salawats upon you. Takes away every difficulty, every sadness, every mushkalat, every knot in our life is resolved by this love. And as soon as we make these salawats, make the salawats, this love and sincerity enters into the heart. And that way the sincerity begins to develop, Ya Sidi Ya Rasulullah Kareem, your hisab is strong with Allah my life has become difficult, grant me a najat that you are my wasila, you are my intercessor, you are my imam, that I love you more than I love myself that please ask Allah for a relief. Please ask Allah for what I'm in need of, please ask Allah for my forgiveness. This relationship of muhabbat and ishq to make you become habayr, to be the lovers of the reality, lovers of Sayyidina Muhammad in which all their day and night is begging Allah that grant us the audience of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and the audience for that reality is only the broken hearted. That's a ticket into the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is to be broken hearted. The, the people whom everything is fantastic for them they don't think about these things. They don't think about stopping, they don't think about connecting, they don't think about that love and the importance of that love. And we gave the example as a parent and that's why half of our deen is having a family. If you're capable and medically able or you have a inherited or family of the community, when you have a family you understand. Your children when everything is great they don't really need you, they don't probably remember you. But as soon as they can't pay a bill they're right in front of you. As soon as they have a difficulty, a hardship, something is not working they're asking from your hisab that, please help me take this difficulty away from me, send me a support, give me a support. And Allah is teaching through our families, that's why it's half our deen. That look, you are their support, they rely upon you. Of course they rely upon Allah, that's an arrogant ignorant person to think it's uh, not that. But Allah says, go a little bit deeper, don't be superficial say everything is Allah. We know that, that's kindergarten. But for the details Allah is saying, He's relying on you, you help him, you support him, you take your child out of that difficulty because he's your responsibility. Same for the shaykhs, their responsibility are their children that they brought into the world and the children that Allah sent them in this world. So Allah sent them to be under the hands of these shaykhs like the children and Allah is expecting that you pray for them, that you pray that these issues are resolved in their life, that they learn what they're doing wrong and that you intercede for them. And we said that intercession for shaykhs and awliyaullah who have been trained is haqiqat al-tawajjuh wa tawassul. Allah open these realities within their heart. That Allah open within their heart the tawajjuh in which they can see the face because their heart is open. As soon as they make their connection they see the face of their shaykhs, they see the face of the imams, they see the face of the companions and they see the face of Sayyidina Muhammad And if necessary they go into that presence and they make their tawassul. How can you make a tawassul when you don't have tawajjuh? If you're not looking at the face and whom you're talking to, your prayer is blind. The, the prayer of a blind man is he doesn't know which direction he's looking, he's just making du'a, that's okay, alhamdulillah. But when Allah opened the heart of awliyaullah because they went to the cave, they lived in the cave, they did all their practices in the reality of that cave. 
And what Allah described in Surah Al-Kahf that these young people who believed they entered into the cave and we granted them hudan. Why Allah would say you enter into a cave and you would be granted guidance? Why did He say, hey, we granted them protection? Weren't they running from shaitan? And then why Allah is saying, I, I granted them hudan? They were youth who believed. So disbelievers don't run into caves. So they were people who believed. They entered in a cave. If this was just a regular story, why Allah didn't say, We granted them protection? But throughout the verses of Surah Al Kahf, Allah said, No, we set their affairs, means for the heavenly reality, and we granted them hudan, guidance. So, why would cave be guidance? Because it's not a physical cave. The cave is, is representing the qalb and the heart. And they understood their life was to take themselves into the heart of the awliya, heart of Sayyidina Muhammad with their zikr, with their tafakkur, with all their contemplation. And as a result of that cave and the guidance and hudan that Allah want to give, that's why we said before last night, whom Allah guides, He guides. Whom Allah does not guide, they have no waliyun murshidun. Also in this Surat Al-Kahf verse 17, whom Allah guides and gives them guidance is guided. Whom Allah does not guide, they have no waliyun murshidun. And the English they translate it to hide the the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah of awliya and they say that it has no protecting friend. Oh protecting friend? That sounds like a bodyguard. But waliyun murshidun means of a saintly guidance. So that this saintly guidance from Surat Al-Kahf Allah is describing these awliya. That their hearts are open. When I grant my servant guidance, I grant them from six powers within their heart. I grant them the realities of their, their soul and their soul's guidance. When Allah wants to make somebody Rashideen, He dresses them from the realities of guidance so that their ears are guided, their eyes are guided, their breast is guided, their hands are guided, their feet are guided. So much so that they are Rabbaniyoon and they have power of kun fayakun because their will matches the will of Allah matches the will of Sayyidina Muhammad Fatiullah ti Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. So all of these is the secrets of this cave, it's a cave of guidance. As soon as we enter into that cave and Allah want to dress us and bless us from these realities, this is then the reality and the dress that Allah want to dress upon the servant. We pray that Allah grant more and more understanding that this love and this muhabbat, the key to entering into this cave and understanding auzu is that with this ish and this love and salawat. Uh, uh, attending the majlis of zikr and salawat al nabi and in every moment making our salawats, making our zikrs, making our practices. When we're at home and we come home from our work is to make our connection, do all the namaz and the, the things that Allah has ordered. But at the same time making our connection, doing our salawats. And then building that love and that muhabbat for Sayyidina Muhammad So that every difficulty to be taken and every reality to be dressed upon the soul. When we understood that then everything we do we're going to base it on this A'udhu Billah. Because at every moment shaitan is trying to trick us to break the A'udhu. So when somebody takes themselves to a place that is outside of their auzu, and then they ask, is there protection there, will I be protected there? Most likely no because you are breaking willfully the auzu. 
So our life was very simple to understand, you don't need complicated fatwas for everything. It's a very simple that I want to live in the protection of A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. So then don't go somewhere where shaitan is inviting and where shaitan is pulling the person in, keep the protection of Allah Don't go to places in which the A'udhu is broken because then you are leaving your shield of protection in life. That's very simple and everything we do and everything we're about to do and anywhere we're going to go and anything we're going to do is, I ask myself, is that breaking my awzu? That I'm leaving the protection of Allah and then no longer under the blessing of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. If we can live that life and its understanding, at least this is now just the entryway into the understanding of that cave of protection. We live a life under that protection, the Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem and that I'm moving towards the realities of keeping myself where Allah is happy, doing the things that Allah inshaAllah happy with, trying to make Allah at every moment happy with me and then building my connection with the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad When your love becomes ignited, you want to be around Muhammadiyoon. That's why I said before, we said before, you show me your friends and I show you who you are. So you can't say, I, I, love, I love the reality but my, my friends are all garbage. Means that if you love roses and you love the beautific fragrance of a rose garden, what do you do? You go to rose gardens and you sit in the rose garden and you say, oh what's so beautiful the fragrance. You don't go hang out in a trash dump near the trash waste and say, I just I thought it'd be sit here, I'd, I'll sit here and do my meditation, right? So what you love, you seek it. When you love roses, you sit in a rose garden so that you can admire Qula Muhammadi, its fragrance and its character. When you love Sayyidina Muhammad and the ishq becomes solid within your heart, you want to be around Muhammadiyoon. You want to be around those whom have this immense love and ishq because you feel their love, you feel the fragrance of their love and then what does it tell you when a whole bunch of ashiqeen are gathering then who, who, who must be present? Oh no, very good, thank you very much. <laughs> Prophet <laughs> must be present at all the associations where ashiqeen are gathering. Allah described khuluq al azim that the, how could you have the best of it, uh, most mu- uh, magnificent character and people are gathering for your love and you don't show up? It's impossible, it's impossible that even to think like that. Khuluq al azim that Allah describes the beautific character of Sayyidina Muhammad and Sayyidina Muhammad can be infinite places all at the same time, doesn't take anything from Allah's oceans of power. So if one person sitting there with ishq and love, Prophet must be there sending a tajalli. If 500 people are sitting with ishq and love, Prophet tajalli must be there, ruhaniyat there, nazar upon them, dressing them, blessing them and interceding upon them. That can be understood and the immensity of its power can't be understood. That's why only Allah can only say that every difficulty will be taken away by means of that nazar. And not only difficulty because difficulty is your dunya which Allah doesn't care for your dunya. But that nazar that's coming from the ruhaniyat of Sayyidina Muhammad is enough to take you to the highest levels of your paradise realities, something that you can never lose. The, the dress in which that comes from that nazar and that beautific grace that dresses the souls of the believers, it takes them to the highest levels of their paradises. And alhamdulillah Allah give us this love, give us this ish and make that love to, to
to fill our hearts for our families and for our communities inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yatifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.